Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Nerd Sports, we're going to talk about Randall Jeffries in California. Through a DNA test, we found out that this milkman from back in the 1950s and 60s fathered 800 children. That was it. I got nothing else. And then someone sent me this. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I'm trying to wrap my head around that. I mean, that's like Dale Murphy and Sean Kemp all rolled into one. What's really sad is, is he he was happy about it because he thought he was sterile. And now because of the DNA test, he's fathered like 800 children. So that Tell was me like he was a sperm donor. Wait, can you? No, he was a milkman. That's even funnier. You can hear me, right? Because it says mute on my screen. Hold on a second. Yeah, I can hear you. No, if you go over something, it'll, oh, okay, it'll say I see. It, All right, never mind. Say, never it's mind. Just the mute button. Never mind. See, we figured it out. Victory. Yeah. Yay. Okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> this it was a good weekend of football. Uh, it was. Oh, it was a lot of game changers. Oh man, and a I'm lot of surprises. You. We all right, so let's let's unpack this first. So the first game was uh let me let me get helps if I'm prepared here. Look at me, everybody. Ha 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 ha. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Wild card weekend. Okay, so first game that we're gonna unpack. And I say unpack, we're just gonna kinda go over. We picked the Bengals to beat the Raiders. Now Let's take this into consideration. Uh-huh. I saw a tweet the other day that said nobody has ever had a tweet that described a Bengals playoff win because the last time that the Bengals won a playoff game was two years before text messaging came out. Uh-huh. Well, they broke that streak. They can no longer say that after Saturday because the, the Bengals came out and they made a uh, the, the first playoff game in NFL history, which had, each that, team like, had made oh, oh, four sorry, field sorry, goals. Sorry, sorry, did you hear? Did you hear that like little beep? No, it's just the government tapping our lines. It's okay. okay. Just, oh, just well, as long as the <laughs> government, right? Um, you know, it's just uh, it's like you know, birds aren't real; they're they're actually drones. Okay. Um, it's the first NFL playoff game in history where each team made four field goals, but the Bengals came out on top 19 to 26. So the honeymoon's over with the Las Vegas Raiders. They can go back and start hitting the strip clubs on the strip and drown their misery in the free booze. As long as they're on the floor playing slots. Um, what you mean, right? That too. Okay. Just don't drink and drive. Don't drive and drink. And if you're you going to drink, that. get an Uber. And for God's sake, don't drive your expensive exotic sports car at 126 miles an hour and plow into a soccer mom's minivan. That happened. Anyway. I know. Um, overall, we went four for six for our picks this weekend. However, our first speed bump, we picked the Patriots to beat the Bills. And if you remember correctly, if you will roll back the tape and look at the uh, footage, I told you that I kind of had a feeling that the Bills were going to win that game, but something told me to pick the Patriots. It's like that second guessing thing on your te- forty-seven on a test. to seventeen. I know now, that was a beating. Derrick Allen became the first quarterback in Buffalo history with five pass or five five passing TDs and no interceptions in a playoff game. Now, how why this is important. It's a caveat to the fact that for the first time in an NFL game, period, an offense basically pitched a perfect game. They scored touchdowns on every drive except for the victory kneel downs at the end of the game. They had no punts, no field goals, and no interceptions. Fuck. And they did it against a top five defense. That's pretty good. That was uh, was a beatdown of epic proportions. Um, then we're going to go into the Eagles visiting Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers, the number two seed Buccaneers. 
We picked the Bucks to win that one. They did, 31-15. to Because remember I told you, Tom Brady is going to come out with kind of a chip on his shoulder because the last team to beat him in a, in a Super Bowl was the Eagles. Granted, it's a different Eagles team, but still, he had a vendetta, and I think he took it out on the Eagles pretty harshly. Um, Mike Evans was the first player in Tampa Bay history with over 100 receiving yards, one receive, uh, one, and, and one receiving touchdown in a playoff game. Um, Tampa Bay is going to be dangerous, man, because uh, they're going to play, <clears throat> I think they're going to play the Rams uh in Tampa Bay and <laughs> the winner of this next game we also got this game wrong um with the Cowboys over the 49ers now score says 23-17 San Francisco <sighs> Dallas had 14 or 15 go- or penalties against themselves that is a team postseason record. <sighs> That's not a sigh of relief. That is a sigh of frustration, exacer- exacerbation. Yeah. And just total disappointment. I mean, seriously. The, well, the Cowboys, they go 12. Disappointment. They, they go 12. Me. They go 12 and 5. They win their division, basically going away. They had the number three seed. San Francisco, excuse me, San Francisco had to win to get in. Yeah. They they wrapped up the six seeds. Yeah, they were the sixth seed. And then they could turn around and they come into Dallas, into Jerry World, into the Death Star, AT&T Stadium, and they win. And I'm just sitting there going, Seriously, I mean, I had my 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 light and Van Der Esch jersey on. I'm pacing up and down the floor because I'm sitting there going, I'm like, all right, this is going to come down to it. And then what does Dak Prescott, what does he do? Pull a Tom, uh, he, Tony he, Romo? He, he, no, 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 no. He runs up the middle with basically f- four seconds left on the clock. And, and and this is a rule that I don't agree with. The referee has to touch the ball and and in order to give the defense a chance to set up before the next offensive snap. Now, if you're going to keep this rule in play, temporarily stop time for a period of like two or three seconds, and just in time. And as soon as that referee gets his hand off the ball, start the time. Pure plain and simple. Because that referee, that line, that that back judge who was responsible for setting the ball was out of position. He ran over Dak. He ran over the center, ran over the guard, pushed everybody out of the way, and they didn't have time to snap the ball. Game over. And then the the referees ran off the field. Cowboys fans were throwing trash at the referees. Dak Prescott initially said, uh, you know, he's like, he thought that the the fans were throwing trash at the team and he kind of sounded off about it. Then he realized, oh, they're throwing trash at the referees. And then he made the comment, good for them. <laughs> right? Like he was backing these play, you know, backing the fans up. Well, apparently he went back and retracted his statement. Oh, I apologize. It was unprofessional. Me, <laughs> you know, it's like, shut up, dude. Now, you here's... guys screwed the pooch on this game in a royal fashion. You defeat, I mean, you beat yourselves. I mean, and, and you know, you know you, in hindsight, you kind of needed to see it coming because it's kind of like a baseball team that goes out and scores 20 runs one game, and then the next night their offense is just absolute dog water. It, it's kind of like that. It's like, you know, they go off and score 51 points against the Eagles the last week of the season, and then they come out. And they're slow, they're stale, they can't move the ball, they can't run the ball. I mean, I'm just sitting there going, are you kidding me right now? It's, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was embarrassing. Not, not necessarily to be a Cowboys fan in per se, but it was just embarrassing to watch them just flail about the field the way that they did. 
And and then they made some adjustments coming out for the second half. And yeah, sure, they started moving the ball a little bit, but they didn't do what it they didn't do what it needed, you know, what they needed because every time they had a really really great play, like a long play, it got called back because why? Oh, because a, some offensive lineman decided that he wanted to hold where he didn't need to be holding because he was away from the play. Like, are you serious right now? Like, come on, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just it was just so nonsensical it, it was it, it was you know i mean it was fodder for every cowboy hater in america and i mean it was a beautiful day for them but dude it, that that victory i mean that that loss right there rather it should have been had i mean literally i mean the cowboys figured out a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory I mean, at no point did they lead during this game, but they had every opportunity to make big plays. But they just kept shooting themselves in the foot. And that's not to take credit away from San Francisco because they came out. And, I mean, this is the first time that they've ever beaten Dallas on the road in the postseason. I mean, they were previously 0-2 going into that series, you know. So, I mean, good good job on San Francisco's part. You know, I mean, great, awesome. The The running joke continues to happen for the for the Cowboys. And, you know, of course, you got all these Cowboys fans that are like, well, it's always going to be that way as long as Jerry Jones is the owner. Well, no, that's a fucking cop out. You know, I'm sorry. That's just not something that just needs to be said anymore because it's just just old old hat. You've got a coaching staff. I mean, your, your, your defensive coordinator, he's freaking awesome. Dan Quinn, love the guy. Bring him back. Awesome. But they're um, actually they're actually there's like rumors that they're getting rid of the uh, head coach, Mike McCarthy. You know what? But it's only <clears throat> it's only rumors. I really doubt if it's rumors. I don't want to say maybe get rid of the guy. I, is it a possibility? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the guy's won one Super Bowl. He did it with Aaron Rodgers. Oddly enough, at AT and T Stadium when that when the Super Bowl came here. Yeah, but you know, I. <sighs> On the bright side, we don't have to suffer through another potentially heartbreaking loss at the next level. So the Cowboys get everybody's hopes up. I think Stephen A. Smith if, if from a, uh, ESPN, who is an unabashed Cowboy hater, he's like, the Cowboys are set up in a certain way to where they'll build you up and knock your socks off in the regular season. And then they're going to lose in the first round. It's just something that they do. It's almost like a tradition, you know, so why mess with something that's broke, right? But moving on, um, what turned out to be Ben Roethlisberger's last game in the NFL, uh, the Steelers went into Arrowhead to play the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Chiefs beat them 42-21. to um, So, you know, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger, he had a couple of, I think he had at least one touchdown pass in that game. Um, Kansas City was just, they were just too hot for him. That's all there is to it. Um, the last game was the Monday night game. It was the Cardinals versus the Rams. And we picked the Rams to win that one. And, and I, I said that they were probably going to win going away on that one. Uh, the Rams did, basically, 34 to, to, to 11. So the way that the the, the playoff pitcher looks now, is let me get over here to the schedule we're going to move on to the divisional round um the Bengals are going to go to tennessee to play the number one seed tennessee titans Mm -hmm. um the 49ers are going to go to the frozen tundra of lambeau field to play the packers who's also the number one seed both of those games are going to be on saturday uh the sunday games are going to be the la rams going to the going to tampa bay to play the buccaneers and the Buffalo Bills are going to come to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs. Um, those are those are both of the Sunday games right there. So right now we're down to the Elite Eight, basically. Um, uh, man, you know, the, I mean, this week's picks. I don't know. Uh, let's. I'm gonna let me let me try to make some sense of this here. Um, Cincinnati's kind of hot right now. They're on a streak. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of playing above their batting average right now, though. But and Tennessee's had a week off. 
So they're rested. They've been practicing. I mean, they know who they're playing. They've had game plans prepared for both of them. So now they're just putting it into putting it into practical application. So I think we're going to take the Titans over the Bengals. Uh, let me see something. Yeah, but last time the Bengals were actually at the Super Bowl, I mean, it was like uh, 1989. So, yeah, still. and they played the 49ers, which to that up to that point in time before the Buccaneers pulled it off last year was the closest thing to a, a home game for for uh, the, you know, for the quote unquote home team because the 49, they played the 49ers at the Rose Bowl in okay. Pasadena. So, and they lost that game to the 49ers, the Joe Montana 49ers. Uh, speaking of the 49ers, the 49ers at the Packers. I'm taking the Packers. Just because they've, again, they've had the rest. They're probably one of the, if not the single handed, the most potent offense out there right now. It's just, Aaron Aaron Rodgers is just kind of balling right now. And he's got the receiving core and the running backs to pack, you know, to back up his talk. Yeah. You're plain and simple. Um next we are the 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 following day, Sunday game, the first game at two o'clock central time. It's gonna be the Rams at the Bucks. I am gonna take the Bucks over the Rams. No, it's not because of a Tom Brady thing, because if you notice, I'm wearing my Dallas Maverick Mavericks jersey. I'm not wearing my Tom Brady jersey, either one of them right now. So while I am going to pull for the Buccaneers, it would be kind of cool to see a Tampa Bay, Tennessee Super Bowl. Um, but again, I'm not going to get ahead of myself because the Titans have to get past Cincinnati this week. If they can do that, more likely they're going to end up playing the Chiefs for the AFC Championship. Um, and that's going to be an amazing game. I mean, just absolutely amazing game. Those are going to be next next week's games for for the uh, conference championships. That's going to be a big, big, big breakdown. And then we're going to kind of have like a one or two week lull. I think it's going to be a one week, or like a one week kind of like a lull, like a calm before the storm mm-hmm. for the Super Bowl. And I really. I think we should do something special for that particular game. You know, I mean, not necessarily film it during the game because then we'll, we'll get into trouble with the NFL. But uh, I don't know. I, it, I don't know. And this is going to take some editing on your part, but I mean, maybe we've like figure out a way to go watch the game together or something like that at Buffalo Wild Wings or someplace like that. Well, we, okay, here's the thing. We can't, no matter what, where we go and everything like that to watch the game, we can actually watch the game. Yeah, okay? but we can't. And we can have anything. our and we can have our reaction. We just can't show any of the game. Yeah, I just can't show any part of the game. And I'm surprised that the NFL to this point has let us get away with the show right now. But hey, what are you going to do? You're going to come out there and stop everybody? Papers, please. Um. <laughs> but there, there, there is way. There's a, there, there are ways around that a lot of people do it. Like uh, for uh, UFC, when it's pay per view and everything, guy like watches it on Twitch. Uh, what I see a lot happen is sometimes too nowadays uh, is uh, guys people going live on TikTok. Yeah, and I'm like, I should probably do that. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking about doing something like that for TikTok and everything like that. Although we need to start uh, writing scripts for uh, TikTok so we can get like a little bit of a TikTok vibe going. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, so this last game, the Bills at the Chiefs. This game, I do not know. I mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, it is way that, so weird. But, I mean, because- with the way that Buffalo is playing right now. And then you got the Chiefs, and I'm like, oh, dude, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, because this... they're they're playing they're playing their hearts out. <clears throat> yeah, let me look at something here. Let me see if I can but, find uh, angry angry cop. Uh, God, I can't remember his actual real name, but angry cop. He 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 went to the Bills game, 
and he brought his motivation uh fire truck he built yeah. this fire truck dude it has a tv on it uh it does drinks and everything it w- it was so fucking awesome hmm. but they also have uh oh and I, I found this out like through like uh him too was the uh I think it the Bills Mafia or the Buffalo Mafia. Yeah, yeah the Bills Mafia. Bills Mafia. How they got the uh it set up and uh ESPN was up there. They were gonna do like a segment on them, but Barstool was like uh hey can we do this it was like no we already agree with barstool espn they can cut it but we're espn and they're like no no you can have the uh mayonnaise hot dog and and ketchup's the guys and mayonnaise is girls yeah so they're basically that was their one up but they also have this uh bowling ball where you take shots from it, it if you get a chance take a look at uh i think it's i think it's on barstool take a look at the uh bills mafia it is just it is so it is so so energetic how these guys react right okay so according to cbs.com i'm looking to see who's favored um Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see here. All right, so the Chiefs are a two point favorite at home in the in the latest NFL odds. From C- and this is coming from Caesar's Sportbook. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and but they lost to the Bills at home, thirty eight to twenty in Week Five. But uh, I mean, they're they're a two point favorite right now. And if the and if the Chiefs win, this will be their fourth consecutive AFC championship game. Um I don't know, man. Part of me wants to pick the Chiefs just because I mean it's the Chiefs right now. And they're kind of they're kind of the hot hand as far as the AFC has been concerned over the last three, four years. Uh, However, you know what? We're going to take the bills over the chiefs. This is going to be the upset pick. Yeah. I'm, I I was gonna suggest the Bills only only because of Angry Cop, so, right? I just, um, and then let me see here. <clears throat> now, after simulating any every NFL playoff game a ten thousand times, so Doctor Strange had a hand in this. Uh, the model is high on the Forty ers to cover the point spread, but they're six point underdogs against the Packers, so the Packers are favored going into that game. Uh, let me see here. And then. Okay. All right. So a guy by the name of John Breach, he's a columnist for NFL.com. I mean, uh, CBS.com rather. He's got the bills upsetting the chiefs in a thriller. Now, of course, he's got the Rams beating Tampa Bay. And I just, I don't see that happening. And, and it's not because, again, it's not because it's Tampa Bay. It's not because it's Tom Brady. It's, I think, that Matthew Stafford, he's going to he's gonna pick one hell of a time to have an off game. Pure, plain, and simple. And that's just my gut feeling on it. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, this guy even goes on to... I mean, he talks about it. It was he's talking about the Cowboys and 49ers game. It was also being simulcast on the Nickelodeon network. 
Yeah, like, I saw that they did the slime stuff and everything. He goes, it's only so. fitting the game was on Nickelodeon, but only because I'm pretty sure every kid watching at home on Nickelodeon could have come up with a better play call. That's if true. Mike McCarthy had been replaced in the fourth quarter by two Nickelodeon viewers, I'm fully convinced the Cowboys would have won the game. Biggest upside for the Cowboys loss for me is that I picked against them last week, and I mostly did that because there was no way that they weren't going to botch something big. The Cowboys always botch something big. He really doesn't like the Cowboys. Of course, no, of course, Troy Aikman's the same way nowadays. It's the reason why they're he he's not really allowed to broadcast uh, to. Uh, be and he made a comment group. about that on on his Fox broadcast. Oh, he was really? like, "Oh yeah, the other big game out there today. Is that everybody wishes that they could call." And then he kind of rolls his eyes. And Joe Buck was looking at him like, "Yeah, I know what you're talking about." Uh, but he, he said, can't he say wonder- anything about the Cowboys. It's so freaking hilarious. He said, but with the Cowboys out, this means we can stop talking about them and move on to the division. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm just it like, just, damn. It's just so brutal with the, the, the Cowboys friends because they also had that meme. You know what's going around now? It's like the 10-year-old stuff. It was like 10, year, uh, 10 years me versus 10 years this time. And it's just showing the same picture of an upset with the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. This guy has got. <sighs> okay, so with the head coach that Tennessee has right now, over the last in his four years as head coach, not only have the Titans gone four and zero off of the bye, but they've won those four games by an average of twenty and a half points per game. And bear in mind, Tennessee is coming off of a first round bye. Yeah. So I feel pretty good about that pick now. Um, this is not only the Titans coming off of a bye going into this game, but they're also get, likely getting back Derrick Henry, which is their premier running back. This dude cannot be stopped. I mean, when he starts running downhill, what are you watching? Oh, I was – It something just popped up on my freaking screen. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, I'm watching uh, Gordon Gecko on money, exploration, and capitalism. Okay. Well, uh, the Wall Street. Uh, okay. okay. No, you don't have to explain because the more you try to explain, the less legitimate of an explplanation it sounds like. Um, I can turn the screen never won and show. Road. No, it's totally okay because we don't need to get canceled. <laughs> uh, the Bengals have never won a road playoff game in franchise history. They are a total of zero and seven going into this coming week. Um, but by the by the way, did you know you can get a Pornhub on your uh, uh, Roku stuff? No, just putting it. Okay, carry on. <sighs> Going to put this. I don't need porn. I know that. I was just trying to get the. Uh, I gotta put my book. The, 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 the obligatory. Yeah, uh, I, 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 dude, I have to say some ridiculous stuff. Just so see I now. That. Now it's up to Maria to decide as to whether or not that was a legitimate sigh or not. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just a sigh. It only counts. That's true. Yeah. See, there, there's a second one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, um, and if you're just listening and if you're just starting to listen to us and you're trying to get the inside joke at one of our episodes our super fan maria had decided to count how many size that i forced johnny to take and it was 16 18 i'm trying to pump up to my numbers up to 20 yeah because those are rookie year. numbers bro you gotta pump yeah those up. are rookie numbers so i have to come up with some weird weird stuff to talk about like uh ah no I don't know if we can get canceled from that. We might, yeah. Uh anyways. <clears throat> Carry on. So you weren't gonna bring up your your burgeoning fetish or developing fetish for transvestite uh, Oscar Fox uh, Oscar Foxtrot pages? 
Yeah, because you can get those for free on Pornhub. Why well, pay Don't for forget it? Forget about X videos. Yeah. No, no, I was talking about. Uh, well, my my mate, my neighbor who watches us too, uh, Tony. Shout out to Tony. Uh, Are you saying that you and Tony watch porn together? No, this is what happened. Uh, the there's a guy that uh guy that lives uh in the other room in the apartment complex, mm-hmm. and one day he comes up and he just screams out, "Show me your dick! Show me your dick! Show me your dick!" I was like, and me and Tony just looked at each other, going, "We're smoking a cigarette," and I'm like, "Well, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead." That escalated and, quickly. Yeah, yeah that that was weird. Anyways, so I was smoking my cigarette. George was out. And he just goes back to his uh his apartment and I, I go to Tony and he's like, dude, uh you know what he said? He's like, I was like, What? What did he say? He's like, he's he said that he would really like to get that young man in his uh apartment. I was like, Oh, that's fucked up. What's young man? You're kinda young compared to him, aren't you? Fuck. Okay, that's gonna make things awkward. But anyways. And we just carried on and the, the 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 lifetime and everything like that. He's like, but if you think about it, you can you can basically you have a chance. Just saying, I was like, dude, I'd rather fucking go to the Walmart and get me a, a freaking thing of Crisco and fuck that. And that was the end of my story. And there's two. Oh, it was three? Okay, I'll take three. Okay. Well, okay, so I, we had picked the Packers to win over the Niners. I had forgotten one important thing. Wasn't wasn't there like a player that's, uh, that had COVID in the 49ers? Mm, no. The Packers might be the top seed in the NFC and the favorite to win this game. But the writer of, that, of this article said, I can't automatically pick them to win here. And that's mostly because no team has a, has been better at choking in the playoffs over the past two years than Green <coughs> Bay. So, yeah. I can't really say that because they've actually won a couple of uh, Super Bowls in the last couple of years, haven't they? No, just the one. Just the one, yeah. So it's not an inherently. But they hosted, true. they hosted Tampa Bay last year in the NFC Championship game at home and lost spectacularly. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So. Hmm. Because the last time, uh, the the last time that Green Bay played San Francisco, Green Bay barely beat them thirty to twenty eight. So we'll see. We're going to stick with the Packers. So there is that. That wasn't on me. And then also, fun fact, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Garoppolo, who's the quarterback for San Francisco, has never thrown a professional pass in a game where it's under 40 degrees. So not only is he dealing with cold weather, but he's also dealing with multiple injuries, a shoulder sprain, and a torn ligament in his throwing hand on his thumb. Um, If you've ever gone outside in the cold with an injury, you know that that injury always feels about 47 times worse. Packers were the only team in the NFL that went undefeated at home this year, and now they get to play a play a home game in weather that's going to make Lambeau feel like a giant igloo. So yeah, let's see what the predicted weather is for that game. Oh wow! Here's something. Here's something weird and strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warriors, uh, ba- basketball team, distanced themselves from their owner 
because he said something controversial. He said, uh, when NBA says they stand for justice, don't forget that those uh, are those who sell their soul for money and business, like uh, at Charmath, the owner of the Warriors, who said nobody cares about what happened to – I can't even say this. Hold on. I'm going to have to get the official Stephen Hawking, Stephen Hawking on this one because it is it's an African name. Ah, we even misspelled it. Oh, okay. It's not Africa, it's China. I fucked up. Weavers. Weavers. Genocide okay. in China. Wow. Let me, let me look at this. Uh, oh, it was China's deprogramming camps. Believe it was arrested in... Uh, let me see. Wow, this is weird. Actually, we might want to cover this on the... What the hell? What the hell? Okay. Well, it says... I, this... After later, were, they were abolished in 2013. And a, a, a 2018 law that legitimized them in the... Uh, uh, God. <sighs> Come on, help me out, Stephen Hopkins. Zing Jing. Xinjiang. Yeah, Xinjiang. Look at you. Uh, presented them as educational facilities. <laughs> in fact, inmates were submitted into inhuman regiments of labor and declarations and to strong pressure to renounce their religious faith with instances of torture, such as uh, suspension of deaths and pre- uh, frequently reported. Okay, so here's the weather. For the next few days in Green Bay. Now bear in mind. Lambeau Field is an outdoor stadium. Okay. 17 degrees for the high. Negative 1 for the low tomorrow. Thursday is 12 with a low of negative 7. Friday is 16 with a high of. Or with a low of 9. Saturday it is going to be a balmy 22 degrees. With a low of 0 with a 46% chance of morning snow showers with a west-southwest wind of 13 miles an hour. Oh, that's going to suck. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh, Green Bay's going to... Oh, they're going to eat Jimmy G alive. Oh, God. That is going to be brutal. Brutal. Whew. Yeah, and next weekend, if if Green Bay does win, Saturday and Sunday, next week, the projected long-range forecast is 24 and 22 degrees for a high, re- respectively. Damn. Yeah, that's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boy, that's the kind of cold that you, you know, <laughs> what is it? Uh, the comedian Bob Marley from New England, he's like, it's like it. Has, have you ever been so cold that you just you cuss? Like you get outside and you're like, what the, "This is bullshit." <laughs> That's most people in Boston. It's like he says, "Holy fuck, it's cold outside. This is bullshit." <laughs> How cold is it out there, Ma? Well, it's ball shrinking cold. Let me tell you. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, No baseball news to speak of whatsoever. What's going with the uh, the supposedly striking? (sighs) The Major Major League Baseball has submitted, uh, supposedly, or allegedly, rather, a... uh, a proposal to the Players Union for the new collective bargaining agreement. Mm. But we haven't heard anything yet. Either the players' union is looking it over, or the player union has turned it down. And Major League Baseball is trying to figure out a way to articulate in such a fashion to turn the fans against the players, which is usually par for the course. Yeah. 
But other than that, uh, we can close it up on this episode saying we're going to ha- hang out with our super fan on Saturday. Oh, I need to let me let me do this. Well, um, I have to work Saturday. But uh, she won't be in until like later on in the evening. OK, so let me. And, and the only thing we're, pro- we're probably going to do is we're probably going to go. Uh, if anything, breakfast on Sunday. But uh, I know the only thing we're going to do is we're going to go get nachos from uh, uh, whiskey, uh, the Wichita Brewery. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, it, so it, it's not that big of a deal. All right. What are you doing? posting to our facebook page oh okay uh also uh hopefully sometime soon uh we need to get together and look over that podcast stuff and see if something that we're interested in i I looked over it and it's just like flashy stuff and everything yeah but um (laughs) yeah i said here are divisional round picks fuck nuggets (laughs) (laughs) uh uh it's good times we love you guys i mean not really but we do because <laughs> without you we would just be talking into complete nothingness and we just had two dudes having a conversation yeah we wouldn't be angry me we'd be like just two dudes which i think they actually have a podcast named two dudes two dudes and a puppy then, but that just sounds like a really creepy, like fetish porn. Never mind. That just we'll sounds like reality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna stick with angry. Me. We'll, we'll okay. Go yeah, I mean that was bad. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you need to have more fun with that damn thing. I, it gives me a Google every time you do it. And sometimes I'm like, "What the fuck was it?" Oh, 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 Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but then we have you know moments where we just say something just so off the wall that it's it's almost like we like have verbal gonorrhea bring that ass back like a boom 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 boom. see (laughs) but the verbal gonorrhea was you know i mean for those who do not know what verbal verbal gonorrhea is it's uh basically a clap (laughs) <laughs> I'm still wondering if two people that have the clap end up uh, being an audience. So, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, yeah. This it- episode was recorded live in front of a studio audience. <laughs> oh, okay. and, 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 uh, She's going to try to uh, come to, I, I still got to get with, uh, I'm going to do that hopefully probably tomorrow. Uh, what are we going to try to get her in the studio? No, she doesn't want to do the studio. Uh, okay. But she's trying, She's. I told her that on the 12th, we're going to try to get uh, a live show. And it's not going to be like on live. It's going to be recorded, but we're going to go to the deep end and record an episode mm-hmm. live. Yeah, I don't, I'm totally down. I'm tracking. Yeah, I'm. I'm so confused on the whole live thing. I know we're not going live, but we're going to do a live episode. We're going to shoot in front of an audience. Yeah, I, I guess that would probably be the best. But we're going to shoot in front of an audience. Man, my brain is at this later than night. I'm just what? Do, where where am I going with this? But we are gonna. I'm gonna. We need to. We also need to shoot a video for the murder basket, which I'm gonna get the stuff this. Uh, some of the stuff this week. Uh, rest of the stuff is stuff I can. The only thing I can't get is the uh, uh, black skulls and the uh, uh, dag, uh, dag, bloody dagger bath bombs. I have to order it online. Hopefully, it'll be shipped up for uh valentine's day but uh we're gonna shoot a video for that and uh 
you're gonna like subscribe to our pay uh youtube page uh for that and uh leave a comment and that's how we're gonna get the name uh, the comments is basically gonna be we just want you to like and subscribe our shit so we can seem like we're important but yeah we're we're, we're doing this the comment oh no <laughs> but the comments is where we get your name uh, <laughs> uh hopefully it's a person that knows so that uh, contacting you would be a lot easier but i'm still going to uh bottom line don't yet. be a shit pump just freaking comment on the page and for you guys and yes we're using two genders here don't pretend to be a chick because if we find out that you are an actual dude and you were masquerading as a chick, we are going to trash you on oh, our next show. I don't really give a fuck. I do because this is supposed to be a basket for the ladies. I don't know. I, I kind of want, ba- want the basket too. There might be a guy that's very, very uh, into it. Because I'd take bubble baths with little bath bombs. I'm securing my masculinity. Fuck you, boo. I'm securing <laughs> my masculinity, motherfucker. Hey, I am too. I mean, I get pedicures. I give a shit. I'm on my feet all day, every day. Uh, all right, fine. Fuck it. All right, Lorena, open it up to both genders. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. So, um, all in all, I think that's. And that dude could it. actually give it to his woman. Fine. If you want to play semantics, go right on ahead. Dumping everybody. But I am. <laughs> David Dickerman. <clears throat> I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Nerd Sport. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll <laughs> check with you next time. That was the whitest thing possible. I know. <laughs>